when you're at 35% body fat or higher, it's easy to get overwhelmed with all the fat loss advice out there. In theory, this should be pretty simple. You eat less to create a calorie deficit, and then you exercise regularly. But there are so many different ways to go about it, and it's difficult to know which one is right for you, and also which one works long term. And that's why in this video, I want to simplify things for you. I want to give you a five step process that I recommend you take if you're at a high body fat percentage to start getting this handled and finally see results. Now diving into it, the first step I recommend you take is to map out your fat loss journey and set realistic goals. Let's say you're starting at 225 pounds or about 102 kg at 35% body fat and you're 5 foot 10, 178 centimeters tall and your goal is to eventually get to 15% body fat. The first thing we need to do is estimate your target body weight at that 15%. In order to do that, we need to figure out your fat free mass. To do that, it's pretty simple. We take 225 minus 35% and that brings us to 146 pounds or 66 kg. Now we take that fat-free mass number divided by 0.85, and that brings us to 172 pounds or 78 kg, which is your estimated body weight at 15% body fat. And as you can see, that's a pretty big goal. You gotta lose 53 pounds or 24 kg to finally get there. And a lot of people will find this number intimidating because they usually start the process thinking they only gotta lose 15 or 20 pounds. And the truth is, most people underestimate how much body fat they have, they overestimate how much muscle they have, and they really don't have an idea how much weight they actually need to lose to get to a lean physique. And to make a big goal like this more manageable, I would recommend that you split it up into different milestones and phases. So my recommendation if you're starting at 35% body fat, you want to go down to 15% is to do this whole process in three different phases. Phase one would be going from 35% down to 25% body fat. And to set the goal for this phase, we're going to take that 146 pounds of fat free mass and divide it by 0.75. That brings us to 195 pounds or 88 kg. That is the estimated goal weight for 25% body fat, which means that in this phase, you gotta lose 30 pounds or 13 and a half kg. And my recommendation is to lose that at a rate of one to two pounds per week or about half a kilo to one kilo per week. So that means that this phase one might take you anywhere from 14 weeks all the way up to 30 weeks, depending on how fast you go. Now for phase two, I recommend going from 25% down to 20% body fat. Here we can use fat-free mass again to estimate what will be your goal weight at 20% body fat. So we take that 146 pounds of fat-free mass, divide that by 0.8, and that brings us to a goal weight of 182 pounds or 82 and a half kg. That means you gotta lose an additional 13 pounds or five and a half kg to hit that goal. I would recommend losing this at a rate of one to one and a half pounds per week or half a kilo to three quarters of a kilo per week. So that means that this phase will last anywhere between say eight to 13 weeks, again, depending on how fast you decide to go. Now phase three is that final bit where you're going from 20% down to 15% body fat. In terms of weight, that means you're going from 182 pounds or 82 and a half kg down to 172 pounds or 78 kg. So that's a difference of 10 pounds or four and a half kilos that you gotta lose. And I would recommend losing this at a rate of one pound or half a kilo per week. A lot of people do report that it's much more difficult for them to go from 20% down to 15% body fat compared to how it was to go from 35% down to 20%. Calories are lower, they have diet fatigue that they care from before, they find that small slip ups matter a lot, and that they need to be very dialed in, and that's the truth. Now, these numbers that I mentioned can change a bit if you build some muscle, but overall, as you can see, going from 35% body fat down to 15% is not gonna happen overnight. This is why it's so important to have the patience, to make sure you're hitting the like button on all my videos, and to have a plan that's realistic and sustainable. If you burn out in the first four to six weeks, you really don't have a chance to reach that 15% body fat. Now that we have some realistic goals, it's time to move on to the second part, which is taking control over your diet. And the first thing that I recommend doing here is getting rid of the obvious stuff, the sugary drinks, the sodas, the liquid calories in general, and minimizing ultra processed junk foods such as crisps, 
chips and cookies. This is low hanging fruit. This is common sense that everybody should be doing. And then on top of that, you wanna increase your intake of lean protein, fresh fruits and vegetables. This will boost your satiety, you will be less hungry, it'll be much easier for you to create a calorie deficit. And for most people at 35% body fat, these changes alone are enough to get some really good results. And in practice, taking control over your diet also means less food delivery and more preparing your own meals. People tend to forget that the restaurant doesn't care about your health and fitness goals. They optimize their meals for taste. So they're gonna add as much fat, as much sugar as necessary to make the food taste better. They don't care about how many calories it has. So you could end up in a situation where if you're eating out a lot, you're not sure about the ingredients, where you feel like you're eating a good high quality diet where ingredients are solid and healthy, but you're not losing any weight because the calorie count is too high and you're simply not in a calorie deficit. Now, one way to manage this with much more accuracy is if you spend four to five weeks on tracking your calories and your body weight. That way you can see what you're putting in your body, you can estimate the intake from those meals that you're not preparing yourself, and you can see where you're going over and start making adjustments to get yourself in that range of losing one to two pounds per week. And overall, your goal should be to make it as convenient as possible to eat healthy and make it far less convenient to grab random junk food. So you wanna make sure you organize your life to limit access to trigger foods so you don't have to waste your mental energy on trying to resist the temptation. Now, in parallel, you also wanna stock up on healthy groceries so you can prepare meals at home that fit your calories and macros. This will do wonders to improve your consistency. Now, speaking of consistency, the third step I recommend is that you do a bad habit inventory. For this, you wanna grab a piece of paper or open the notes app on your phone and think about your typical week. What are your current bad habits? Do you end up binge eating or binge drinking on the weekends? Are you stress eating or randomly snacking? Are you staying up very late at night some days so you miss a couple of hours of sleep so the next day you have increased cravings or hunger? You wanna create a list of those situations where you lose a lot of progress. What are those anchors that are holding you back and where do you normally fall off track? Based on my experience, most people People have some good habits and some good days, but those good days get quickly destroyed by a handful of bad habits. So the key is to identify them and to find the underlying causes of these bad habits so then you can create a plan to replace them with healthier ones. For example, if you find yourself snacking on junk food every time you get stressed out, now you've identified the underlying trigger and the behavior you need to replace. So next time you get stressed out, you wanna think about taking a walk, you wanna journal through it, you wanna call a friend, maybe meditate using an app, you can listen to some music, you can watch your favorite show, you can take a break from work. All those are effective ways that managing stress that don't involve eating more calories and sacrificing your fitness goals. And breaking bad habits like this will take time and there will be many slip ups, but you can't ignore it and just hope it's gonna go away. You have to actively work on this until you find a replacement behavior that works for you. That way you can break the loop and replace an unhealthy behavior with a healthy one. Now, the fourth step that's extremely important to me to talk about is that you need to adjust your plan to protect your lean muscle mass as much as possible. One of the biggest mistakes that I see with people who have a lot of weight to lose is they often don't understand the difference between fat loss and weight loss. They are solely focused on the weight scale and in their mind, the faster they lose the weight, the better. And often they end up losing muscle throughout the process. So they don't understand that for every pound of muscle they lose, they have to go to a much lower body weight to get to that goal body fat percentage. So for example, in that earlier scenario that I mentioned with the person being at 225 pounds or 102 kg at 35% body fat with their fat free mass being at 146 pounds or 66 kg. That person, if they preserve all their muscle, will be at 15% body fat, roughly around 172 pounds or 78 kilos. But if that person lost 10 pounds of muscle or four and a half kilos, now their fat free mass will go down to 136 pounds or 61 and a half kg. Well, in that case, the person has to diet all the way down to 160 pounds or 72 and a half kg to get to 15% body fat. That's a significant difference. So they have to diet longer and they're gonna end up at a much lower body weight. That's how people end up skinny fat and how people end up with a physique that they're not happy with. And there are really four things you can do to preserve your lean muscle mass. The first one is to make sure you're lifting weights three times per week. Second, you wanna limit how much weight you're losing per week to 1% of your body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, that means losing no more than two pounds per week. Third, you wanna get enough protein. I would recommend one gram per pound 
of your target body weight. And then fourth, make sure you're sleeping seven hours or more per night. If you tick all these four boxes, you're not only gonna preserve your muscle mass, but as an overweight beginner starting the journey, you're actually going to gain some extra muscle mass, which is gonna make sure that you're looking better, you're gonna be a lot healthier, and most importantly, the result will be much more sustainable. Now, the fifth step you need to take to succeed on this journey is to get your head straight and psychologically prepare yourself for the process. The truth is, most people trying to lose weight quit and give up too soon. They're not able to stay consistent long enough. And the biggest enemies of consistency are false dichotomies and rationalizations that we engineer ourselves, such as, if I can't do this perfectly, I may as well not do it at all. If I have this one cookie, that means the diet is over, so I can have the whole bag, and then everything else. Oh, today's a special day, so I may as well eat whatever I want, or I'm gonna eat whatever I want today because I'm gonna start fresh on Monday. The only person that can realistically hold you back on this journey is you. It's your own mind that's working against you, that's coming up with these clever excuses and justifications that you need to learn how to recognize. And perfection is not needed for success, but consistency is. And one cookie doesn't mean the diet is over. It's perfectly fine to have a little bit more if you want to, if you think it's worth the calories. You simply have to make an adjustment elsewhere. For example, if you had more carbs and fats than you planned in the afternoon, you can take out some of those carbs and fats from dinner and from breakfast the next day. These quick corrections are the key to success and consistency. Nobody can do this with 100% accuracy. So don't put that type of pressure on yourself. As long as you know where you wanna go and you monitor your progress and you adjust your plan as you go, that's all you need to see results. The other thing that's gonna help you see results is making sure you subscribe below. Details for coaching, if you wanna work with me on your journey, are in the description below as well. Leave me another helpful video here for you at the end, so check out the video and I'm gonna see you right there.